I, I can already tell people are going to freak out about this after show. I really want to rewatch all those scenes from episode four, having more context mm-hmm. now. Um, but we're going to talk a ton about where Veronica gets that faith from and the other things that she's gone to. Um, maybe some of the things that she's that she's done in the past uh, to kind of look for healing or look for other things. There is a there is a reason for it. We're going to talk about it in a bit. So stick around for our break. <laughs> So here's the after show. This is with Z. They call her Z. Um, her name is Jale. Um, Jale Vosou. That's very French. Very French. Um, <laughs> but the woman that the woman with the issue of blood, aka Veronica, in here. Um, but um, but yeah. So here uh, we see her now. I wasn't sure until like a week and a half ago, maybe, maybe two weeks ago, me and everybody on our discord, which by the way, you can join our discord if you'd like. Um, I wasn't sure if she was actually, um, the woman with the issue of blood. Yeah. Um, because her makeup was so well done. Yeah. I thought they were two different people because they looked so different. Yeah. Um, when we saw her in episode, when when we saw her in the trailer for episode Mm -hmm. four, and then when we saw the, the person, that was that was interviewed like six seven months ago Mm -hmm. um they looked so different because the makeup was was crazy right Mm -hmm. um but let's jump into this after show and let's just you know chat through um what they have to say here i'm interested in just i'm interested to see their breakdown of you know veronica and kind of what's going on here so let's check it out Episode 5 has dropped on the app, so we are here with the after show, Jelaine, and myself to talk to Jale Vosu about her character, Veronica, or as I think most of us know her as, the woman with the issue of blood. Mm -hmm. It's one of my personal favorite stories in the Bible, and it's really exciting to get to talk about this entire scene with the actress who did such an amazing job with that. And we're going to talk a little bit about uh, Eden and how she might feel like she's missing out a little bit. So. Jale or Z, can I call you Z? You can call me Z. Ah, thank you <laughs> a so lot much of people for joining us. <laughs> thank yes. you for having me. Yes, so excited I'm you're so here. I'm excited to be here. Yeah, so this really is like one of my favorite stories in the Bible, oh. and is like one of the ones that I really connect with whenever I read it. Though what? this gave me. A f- I get, I'm sorry, I just have to stop. I I can already tell people are going to freak out about this after show. What do you mean? Uh, the dress that she's wearing. I can already I can already tell people are going to freak out about her dress. Fresh perspective on it, so we'll dive right. into that in a little Let bit. But did you have a connection with this story before oh. you came and did the scene and worked on The Chosen? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I had always been a fan of The Chosen, so when I specifically got this part for to audition for, oh, I wow. was like, oh, I have to. I have to get it. One thread. One thread. Just, just French. And I got to meet Dallas and the casting directors and a producer in the room. And then Veronica specifically, um, for me, she's always been kind of the outcast woman. Mm -hmm. And a lot of women aren't highlighted in the Bible. So to bring her story and a woman's story, especially about something like um, a woman who bleeds to light, you know, was very important to me. I think people who might have a handicap, whether it's physical, mental or emotional, can really relate to Veronica because they have something that they're struggling with with something that makes them an outsider and you get to see her have hope no matter what and overcome that struggle it was such a great story to be able to tell and to share and I hope it does move move people in that way and there are even like today um, common unfortunately in some countries they have menstruation huts and there's little girls who die from cold Mm. or starvation or bug bites Mm. or snake bites so it was important for me to be able to convey like the message through the Bible Mm -hmm. that that doesn't necessarily have to be be, you don't have to feel alone no matter what circumstance or culture or if that makes sense no yeah makes, yeah for veronica like the, the woman with the issue of blood like this was the we talked about this a little bit last week but this is the worst case scenario for a jewish woman like mm-hmm. other than being dead right what? no husband is ever going to want you nobody is ever going to want to be around you your parents disown you like nobody can physically be around you because the law says that you'll be unclean okay. if you touch this person yeah. because she's been bleeding for 12 years. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. So it's bigger than just like, she's an outcast. Like, no, she is the outcast of outcasts, you know, like she, worse than leprosy, worse than leprosy because she can't even go to a leper colony. Yeah. Right. She is literally alone. There yeah. is nobody else that can be next to her. Right. Mm-hmm. So this is like the worst of the worst of the worst um, for Veronica. And and to be able to play that part well, I think I think I think she, Z did a really good job. Mm-hmm. 
um, of like kind of being like, even in the moment where Jesus has just healed her and like the power went out of him, when he's speaking to her and he calls her daughter and stuff, like I, I love that moment. It's, it's a very beautiful moment, but the the part that I love the best about that scene is when he she just he grabs her face and you can see it's almost as if that has never happened to her in the last twelve mm-hmm. years, you know? Yeah. It's like this moment of like pure relief of mm-hmm. like, oh, I can just I can trust and I can yeah. sink into him. Like yeah, it's a it's a really powerful moment there. Yeah. Perfect sense. Yeah. And so as you know, you touched up on Veronica being an outcast and just feeling alone, but then she meets a friend. Eden Mm -hmm. and then this friendship begins to form can you tell us a little bit more about that bond that begins to form yeah that is funny absolutely I think Veronica from her perspective (laughs) has been isolated rejected Mm -hmm. humiliated in shame um, especially some shame to her sex to being a Mm -hmm. female and when she meets Eden in episode 304 you kind of she sees in Eden this same kind of shame or embarrassment. At least that's how I, you know, felt it when Laura, Laura presented it. Um, because when you go through something, the issue that, you know, Eden had to go through, mm-hmm. there can be a lot of shame attached or there can be a lot of defeat. Like, and she's, I, like she's reading that off of her. So Veronica can read Eden's, like, seeing that she's gone through something. Yeah. I really want to rewatch all those scenes from episode four having more context mm-hmm, now. Mm-hmm. Now, I had, like, the, the theoretical context yeah. from before, but I didn't know that the, the miscarriage already had happened. Yeah. I thought exactly. it was going to happen. I Exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, like, now we all have to rewatch episode four with the context of the miscarriage to kind of get a better idea of what actually is happening. I think that's where they Ginger really connect lesson. as, I'm as women. I'm going to watch both episodes back to back yeah. tonight and get the full impact. Yeah, I think that would help all of us to have a better idea for episode four of what Eden's actually going through. It's almost like when you watch a movie and you find out at the end that there's a twist, yeah. like the book of Eli or something, you know? Yeah, yeah. And when you rewatch it again, then it, it gives you better insight. Yeah. And, and as friends, and I always say I when I'm the character, but <laughs> yeah. Veronica, um, you know, hasn't had that person that's actually yeah. given her a shot. And of course shot. we have the I mean, women and on men. the table, the seat seat that she touched in order to be healed just kind of you know reject her so it was exciting to explore that in the beginning to that one the first scene where they meet just to have that moment of uh, oh oh you you like me but I still don't know how to act um yeah. and offset to Lada and I connected the first day <laughs> we didn't even have a scene together so it was as an actor it's great you know when you work with people you have to tell the story no matter you know what your relationship can be but with Lada it was instantly like buzz and buddies so, much. so it was really fun to to play with her and I think that these two and us two in real life you know friends mm-hmm. for oh, yeah. peas in a pod earlier you talked about how faith wins so from yeah. your perspective where does Veronica's faith come from we're gonna talk a ton about this too i know i'm pausing a lot but that's the whole point of this if you do want to watch just the after show by yourself and just check it out definitely go to the chosen app go to the chosen.tv you can watch it there we're kind of giving our insight here if you want to watch it here Um, but we're going to talk a ton about where veronica gets that faith from and the other things that she's gone to um maybe some of the things that she's that she's done in the past uh to kind of look for healing or look for other things hardboiled entertainment says i am curious if this veronica is the veronica who traditionally wipes jesus's face when he falls carrying the cross yeah this is more of like a catholic tradition sort of leaning um we talked about this last week as well i do wonder if they're kind of like not um saying this directly but maybe they're kind of alluding towards towards uh that name um but we'll see we'll see i think that it's deep rooted in her in her soul you know when you have ugh, i don't cry <laughs> no do it I probably will <laughs> do it cry. no i can't better for TV. um <laughs> when you have rejection cry. with decades of just defeat of being unaccepted if you don't cry we won't isolated. get more views you know, listen it's, it's, it's very sad you cry so for her to have a faith to believe that after doctors and after shamans after crystals everything yep. failed that Thank this you. person could heal her wow. you know the the person who had the, the the darkest of days could still see light i think that's beautiful and i think it yeah. really speaks to people who do have something that they're struggling with a, a sickness or um you know a parent's divorce or death um in the family you know you can't lose that hope because no matter what there's always light there's always light and if you have the faith to just turn the next page like veronica did mm. you know look at what she found i mean yeah. a whole new life yeah. So that was that's uh, Veronica's faith is so powerful to me. I would quantify that with yes, there is always light, but it is always found in Jesus. You know, mm-hmm. there's not just random light that you're going to run into if you keep on turning the page. You can right. keep on enduring, but if you don't 
chase after Jesus, then you're yeah. not going to have relief in right. any way. You Absolutely. know, the line too, where um, someone says, how do you feel something about hopelessness? And then Veronica says, oh, I haven't lost hope. Yes. I'm like, oh, oh yeah. Geez. In episode four. <laughs> yes. Good call. Oh, it's yeah. so intense. Mm -hmm. And that's a very that's powerful line really because especially when you think about the story, you know, growing up thousands of years apart Is from that, you know, I grew up reading it like what a great faith story, mm -hmm. but something in my perspective that I never thought of and forgot to look at because we don't live in a society where the issue of blood is really an issue mm -hmm. where if you're bleeding, yeah. you are unclean and you know, all these right. rituals you have to go through, through, uh, for purity. And so when you add that level on top of it for Veronica's faith, that this purity law and, and what she was going through, how much it would isolate her. Mm. Can you talk a little bit about like what an obstacle that would have been for the woman of the issue of blood? I mean, you wouldn't be able to do anything. You couldn't have a family. Her family abandoned her probably yeah. because it was too hard to keep her, you know, constantly in, a, you know, a shed environment. She couldn't do any work for her family because they couldn't touch anything. In those days when you're unclean, you can't really, not, everything you touch is. I think you're in the minority dr sandy then i'm actually <laughs> vanessa didn't i don't think vanessa cried during this episode either yeah but bryce did so but it's just a, uh, yeah it was sad like i was really really sad about it like yeah it was during different points during different yeah. points yeah yeah, we'll dig into it in a second. Mm -hmm. It's unclean. And I think, you know, you see it a lot in like the pandemic times, like somebody coughs now and it's like, oh gosh. Yeah. So if you can relate to that, um, that feeling of shame when you cough, imagine if you mm. were a person who lived that every single That's day. That's a good correlation. Um, and yeah. the law said that you were unclean and dirty. Um what what kind of confidence could you have as a person? I think that's why in the scene when when she gets the clothes thrown in her face. You deceitful woman. Oh, I'm sorry, you don't understand. Now I'm unclean until sundown. There's not much of a defeat to her more than just this is who I am now. This is what I have to kind like of tolerate. Um, and like for anyone to be okay with that level of disgrace and shame and especially when it's just a, a medical, you know, a normal, natural, physiological thing. But at the time, that's not what it was looked at mm -hmm. uh, or looked as. So I think for her, it's, you know, it's the way life is. And I think that's, again, what gives us hope if, is if somebody can feel like that and, and come out of it or still believe there's a way out and then come out of it. Maybe like, how powerful is me. that? That was Maybe. what I really, really wanted to show that. Yeah. You know. See, I was just preparing so you good. And I really thought that was one of those powerful Not things about anything. Veronica. Because when you really look at the obstacle she had to face, and she still had faith. Yeah. I mean, sometimes it just feels like it's so hard to hang on that today, just mm. any, going through the things we go through. Mm. But she's been through this all her life. For and she just years. still was going to push through that crowd right. and get to Jesus. And it just makes it all the more emotional when that happens. Right. Exactly. Yeah. One of the things I remember is we were up on a roof watching you guys <laughs> yeah. film film that scene, and it was just it was scenes. pretty incredible. Did you have to dress up? Huh? Did you get to dress up or no? You weren't in the shop. No, no we, we weren't in the shop. Room. We were just on a roof. Jesus. Did you see that? What? <laughs> she like knocked Jonathan over. Watch. Did you Double. have to dress up? Huh? Did you get to dress up or no? You weren't in the shop. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see that? Yeah. No, no we weren't in the shop. We were just on a roof, yeah. like hiding, getting some B-roll footage and, you know, all that scene. stuff. But there, uh, the sound guy was dressed up. That was pretty, a very oh, great moment. I think moment. I saw that. It was, <laughs> oh, was really? Yeah. Yeah. I totally part missed of that. It. Yeah. <laughs> so good. Anyway, sorry. But one of the things I love about that scene when I finally got to see it is just the way that mm. Jesus talks to her and he mm. calls her daughter. Mm. And then he even has this key phrase, you have blessed me today. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, from Veronica's perspective, explain what that moment was like. Ooh, well, that's like a moment for me and for <laughs> Veronica that we pretty much shared equally. First of all, oh. Jonathan is like a warm hug. His eyes just <laughs> emulate <laughs> this this place for an actor. You know, to go to those moments, I love doing it. I love moving people. Mm -hmm. But to go to those moments are very can be very tough to do. Um, and when you have someone like Jonathan Rumi op acting opposite you, it really allows you to make the most vulnerable decisions mm. because oh. he's being equally vulnerable. Mm. Um, but for Veronica, when she's, you know, looking at looking at it from her perspective, I mean, she's never been called daughter or her parents disowned mm. her. So to be well, said, maybe not maybe not never, but probably for the last 12 years. I mean, she doesn't look 12 there. Right. Right. <laughs> like, right. Obviously. Yeah. So if this happened, let's say this happened during puberty at the youngest, she could be like 24. Yeah. Maybe 25, 26, something yeah. like that. Um, but she's probably not that old, right? Like she's, pro she's probably not that young. I mean, 
So she's obviously been called daughter at some point in her life. Yeah. Like she's, but not for a long time, not for 12 years. Yeah, yeah. Right. Um, and I love the correlation too between <laughs> Jairus' Chilling. daughter, Jairus' daughter of 12 and yeah. the 12 years of the bleeding woman. I'm sure there's some sort of correlation there as well, mm-hmm. or at least something that we can glean from that. Yeah. Hey, you're accepted now. I accept you. I think that that is, you know, it's, she wants to be a part of a family. She wants to be part of a, f- a friend group wow. and it's almost in a fatherly way. You know, I love you is basically what he's saying that you are loved and it's a joyful teary mm. experience you know to mm. see her from the desperation to the determination to Bryce the just complete talking. meltdown of relief and joy and just yeah. euphoria yeah. Um, but also confusion it's like a euphoric confusion because how do i act I, i've never been accepted which you see at the lake mm. yeah, yeah. kind of yeah. like what do i do here are we friends <laughs> do you are you mad at me because you're dirty no yeah. you know but and that's what played in so nicely with with the whole story so mm. at the end of the episode we see veronica with her cloths her oh. garment and she throws it in the fire hmm. can you tell us about <laughs> just the? Imp- by the way I, we're gonna talk about this later but i do love how um <laughs> how she just literally walks into some blacksmith's shop and throws like her bloody clothing into his forge like <laughs> <laughs> i don't know it seems kind of weird to me but <laughs> i don't know <laughs> emotions that were going through veronica's mind during that moment i think you know, I, I did a lot of research into this character because I really wanted it to be as authentic as mm-hmm. I could find. Yeah. And you'd have to imagine what she was going through as, as not, you know, just a woman, but as a human being. You know, you have these apparatuses strapping everything to it. Life can rag, just be about money. It's never we had a layer of... Like, yeah! Love these chats. Growing heart. <laughs> <laughs> Growing heart. Love it. Thanks, Timothy. You rock. <laughs> Rags as a skirt. Then we had another layer and then another layer. So to remove each layer was kind of a newfound freedom. You know, you had the the apparatus, which um, was something I really Cry researched delay. into. That was the biggest moment with the ropes and, and just cry. cutting them, having cry. that visceral cut of freedom. Um, and then stripping down the rest of the clothes. But to throw them in the fire was the symbolism <laughs> of this is a new me, a new version of me, a new chapter of me. Still the same me, but a growth that yeah. is unimaginable that I don't have to look back at yeah. and weep about. Yeah. And I think a lot of times in our struggles, we look back when we should just be looking forward and, and learn from the past, but not in a way that, you know, keeps us held back. Mm-hmm. If that makes sense. Yeah. Wow. So powerful. Something great about Ugh. that scene i remember uh we were burning the clothes we had just stepped on set and i was coming to see where all the cameras were where i could be and i walked through the street and there's z crying her eyes out <laughs> she looks up at me smiles waves goes back to crying her eyes yeah, out you're... and i go walk on but i think what amazes me about that and like this is where i'm getting with my question is it's we film so out of order the mm. first thing we filmed with you was happy mm. and in yeah. the water Right. The last thing we filmed with you months and months later was you taking those clothes and burning them. And in mm. the episode, those scenes are only minutes apart, but all of the emotion and everything just flows. Mm. It just fits. It, it, so ha- as an actor, how do you do that? Well, Daniel, our makeup artist, did call me Meryl 2.0. No, I'm <laughs> yes. Like, I'll take it. I'll take it. No, I'm kidding. I think when Meryl I 2. approach 0. a script, I always try and take the journey with the character organically. I don't want to start from what's filming first. That's just my process. Because then I can kind of authenticate, hey, this is where she started and these are the mm-hmm. feelings she's going to have at the ending. But I remember that first day when I saw Dallas, I just started crying, like, tears of emotion. He's like, no, this is happy. And I was like, I am happy. But it's also, <laughs> like, so much baggage from her. This release is going to be such a big deal for her and it is for me as an artist because I've created that journey Mm. um so I think that's what that's what I like to do because then I'll know what point I bring the character to as the scenes go but at the same time we you have to leave yourself open for discovery you know in in the moment where I'm with Eden at the lake or at the the spring Dallas and I discovered a lot about Veronica that I hadn't even had thought about um, together and that's why the process of having a director and having a team or amazing Mm -hmm. writers who can really give you the material to latch Mm -hmm. onto that you can kind of mold yourself into and adapt with is the best if that makes sense. Well, you are amazing. Thank so you. <laughs> you deserve an Oscar. Yes. Uh, well, well, one, one, Academy. <laughs> Academy. She's like, well, I wouldn't, you know, deny one. <laughs> <laughs> well, one final thing before we close out, because this episode ends with so much joy, and then the camera pans, and yep. there's Eden. Mm-hmm. And she's yes. like, we just found out this is the episode where she miscarries. 
and she's just going through such a difficult process, especially where Eden is close to Jesus. So I think for Eden especially, you know, she's seeing, she's happy for Veronica, but she's also struggling with, well, why isn't this my chapter? Right. Why yeah. would this happen to me? You yeah. know, Jesus, why, why would I lose this, this thing that I love? And, or, and it's not like she hasn't experienced Jesus in the past. Her right. mother was, was healed by Jesus right in front of her face. Yeah. You know, her husband was completely changed by Jesus, yes. you know, and she is now in a position where she's like, can I ask for more, you know? Like, am I allowed more of a well, portion? Well, like, in well, my opinion, what she's thinking is, why not me? Like, you're healing these yeah. all these people around yeah. me, but what, why not me? Yeah, and you said that you see me, but I don't see that you see me. Yeah. yeah. She feels neglected. Like, we talked about in episode four, yeah. but even more so now, right. right? Like, it goes even deeper because of this new thing that we've learned in exactly. episode five, right? Yeah. So, yeah, it's a... Uh, it's rough, man. It would be really hard to be in Eden's position. Yeah. Or, you know, it's 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 tough, but I think it's a great lesson for everybody in saying, you can't lose hope. Look at Veronica. Yeah. Right. She didn't have her chapter for 12 years, Ugh. and then she got it. That's, That's good so good. That's, that so is amazing. It's it's going to happen, Eden. It's going to happen. Yes. <laughs> I don't know that, but I'm just saying, you got you can never give up. Never surrender. Right. Never give up. Never surrender. Don't lose hope. <gasps> Galaxy Quest fan. Galaxy right. Quest. Let's go. <laughs> Thank you so much, Z. For I love Durbin so much, man. He's such a nerd. <laughs> we love it because we're nerds. Hanging out with Thank us. You. Appreciate Thanks you sharing your nerdum, your vulnerability, Always. the whole thing. Thank you so much. Coming up here in just a little bit, we're going to have Ryan and Tyler joining yes. us again. We're going back into the writer's corner That's your and favorite. we're going to dive. Yeah, I literally could watch like four hours of Ryan and Tyler and dial us just talking about writing. So, yeah, let's do it. Even deeper into episode five. <laughs> All right, we have Ryan and Tyler oh, here. I'd there. like to call this the writer's <laughs> corner because we brought them in here so often now. And Thanks, Andrea. Andrea's so been awesome. a member for 10 months, guys. 10 months. I appreciate that. Why does it say that they just became a member? It's just like a member notification, so it's just seeing it as that. Gotcha. Well, she you've says, been a member. She says, uh, it's as though Eden is having her little James moment. I think in a way, but I also think it's different. I don't think she's going to have... We'll talk about this later, but in a, in a nutshell, I don't think she's going to have a moment with Jesus, at least not an intense one like little James. They're not going to do the same scene twice. Yeah. So I think it's going to end up a little bit different. We'll talk about what I think um, later on. Favorite corner. Yeah, now we're excited to go <laughs> deeper into episode you know. five. Though excited might not be the right word because there's a lot of heavy mm. stuff that goes on in this episode as well as a lot of like really happy stuff that makes mm. the heavy stuff heavier. Yep. So. Yeah, <laughs> Very yeah. cool. So Ryan and Tyler, thank, thank so you for hanging thank out with us so again. Much. Thanks thank for being you. here. So this episode opens up with this reveal of Eden's miscarriage. <laughs> Chris just like looking at the what camera. Inspired to, <laughs> what inspired y'all to write this storyline and what is the purpose of it? This specific storyline, especially because it's not in the Bible. Yeah. yeah. We don't know anything about uh, Eden in the Bible, Michelle. So, like, she she doesn't exist in the Bible. The wife of Peter exists, but Eden is not, it, that Eden's not her name. We don't know anything about her. All we know is that she was the wife of Peter and, um, and that uh, her mother-in-law was healed by Jesus. That's basically the only thing we hear of her ever in Scripture. Um. You know, the, the way that the events of this season gelled, the things that we knew we needed to take from behind the electrified fence of the stuff in the gospel that we cannot touch, those events that mm -hmm. are factual that we cannot mess with, we needed to string them together in a narrative that made, um, uh, uh, that gave us the ability to walk our audience through it with the emotion that we felt that these moments deserved. Mm -hmm. And so to do that, we wanted to focus on Simon. Mm -hmm. And his storyline um, needed to congeal around something that had to do with family. We knew it had to do with a season theme that is becoming increasingly oh, I thought you were gonna evident say and yes. will really come together in the final <laughs> episode. So let's just hold on to that for a second. But okay. we want Yes. Yeah, if we you want to watch it without our breaks and pauses. Yeah, for sure. If you don't, if you want to watch it without us talking through it, then definitely watch it or on the, on the on chosen it. app. Um, yeah, just like always, of course, you can watch it in the in the chosen app or chosentv.com is actually my favorite place to watch it. But <laughs> wanted to uh, bring the storyline and and you know yeah, at a certain point in, this, in in the outline process, I just made a call for pitches. 
Mm-hmm. I said, we need this storyline to be an A emotional line that, that carries our characters through that we can sort of wrap our characters up in. And we got a bunch of things right off the bat. And it was our story editor, Maisha, mm-hmm. who let us know that there was something on her mind. It was weighing on her. It was something that friends had gone through, something family had gone through, something that she knew women went through. And this was her pitch, and it was very simply imagine, stated. Imagine the fear, though, right, from Ryan, Tyler, and Dallas as they're about to write a scene about miscarriage and, like, have this whole thing, right? Mm-hmm. And, yeah. and let's not be mistaken, the miscarriage is not necessarily about Eden, but I think in The Chosen, it's more about the consequences that it means for Simon. Because Peter's not just going to go on and be like, oh, that sucks for you. Now I don't feel anything about it. What do you mean, the consequences? <clears throat> it's going to lead towards how Simon feels about Jesus. Because that's how mm, Eden is feeling, right? Yeah. So it's the end goal for, for the writers is how, how this impacts the disciples, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. So the disciples are the main characters. Jesus obviously is part of that, but mm-hmm. the disciples are really the main characters that push the story. Mm-hmm. So the end goal is not that Eden has a miscarriage. The end goal is not that this horrible thing happens and that she's angry. The mm-hmm. end goal isn't even that she has a moment with Jesus and and everything is healed. Mm-hmm. The end goal is how does this impact Simon? How does it impact their marriage? Mm-hmm. How does it impact Simon specifically? Mm-hmm. And how does he translate that to Jesus? Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. And in a lot of the behind the scenes that we've seen, mm-hmm. there's a moment when Simon seems pretty upset. Yeah, he does. And and this must be why. Mm-hmm. Because he, everything that Eden is dealing with and everything that's going on here, um, he has to translate into... Jesus, why wouldn't you help my wife? Mm-hmm. I was gone. You told me to go away. I couldn't have helped her. Yeah. And why didn't? Why did you do that to me? Why mm-hmm. did you do that to her? Mm-hmm. You know, why would you hurt my family like that? Yeah. And so that correlation has to come in at some level. Now, in the trailer for season three, which we're going to go back through, I think, this week, because we've seen so much of the season that we can kind of distill what mm-hmm. we haven't seen yet. Um, but... Simon specifically has a moment with John and we know that that scene specifically comes from the season finale Mm -hmm. where he's talking with John after the feeding of the 5,000. Right. Seems like it at least Mm -hmm. where John and him are on a walk. Um, and, and Simon breaks down and cries. Mm -hmm. So that has to be a moment when he's like maybe frustrated with the group. He walks away or or seeing like all these miracles, miracle after miracle after miracle. And like, why didn't you help me? Why not me? Right, right, right. Yeah. So I would say just don't, don't be disillusioned to think that this is just about Eden. I think it's going to progress further on past Eden. Even Mm -hmm. obviously the the main trauma happened to her. Not saying we don't care. She's a fictional character, but, (laughs) (laughs) but but I'm saying the writing wise, I think it is pushing towards that. But Yeah. yeah. What if Eden loses baby? And I know that Tyler had an immediate reaction. I don't want to speak for you, but I, I do oh, yeah. remember your it's reaction that. was powerful. And it was like, that's the winner. That, mm-hmm. That's the one that wins. And so we felt emboldened to go. Tyler's like, yeah, that's great. Uh, I mean, uh, not, not great. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> go into this space. And then as we started to learn more and more about it, the, how commonplace it is, how mm-hmm. it is a taboo subject for so many, it's a, 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 a a traumatic place but it, it is a place nonetheless that is is real and and we knew that not only our audience but that our characters would really be moved around this space and so we felt it it it, it had its own gravity yeah and we wanted to run with it and i'll let tyler take mm. it from here yeah there was also a practical component because in the pitches that you were looking for we sort of needed it to be something invisible it couldn't be like that he came back and she had gotten her arm chopped off in a farming accident right, like right, right, it right. had to be sort of something that we could gradually reveal like little crumbs of and also something that for Simon that he wouldn't really have figured out because the initial thing was maybe when he gets Um. back she was lonely or she's starting to really struggle with how much he's gone or she feels whatever but then to add this which can um, be revealed kind of gradually that was the practical consideration but the more important thing is that it is a very common thing that's not talked about as mm-hmm. much probably as it should be yeah it's something that is like a can be a, this very traumatic quiet loss that happens between a couple and maybe a few of their close friends family before they've made a big public announcement you know with the Instagram mm-hmm. photo of the sonogram of yeah. the baby and stuff so um, Knowing that, you know, at least half of our audience is women and then understanding that almost half of 
women um, have had some kind of miscarriage. Learning those statistics, we thought, well, this is a human experience that the whole thing of the show is like making sure that it's relatable right. and that this, this is a very relatable story for millions and millions of people. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. One of the things that kind of stuck out to me in this storyline, like once we got this reveal, is there's this quiet little moment. You know, Eden is hosting Jesus and some of the disciples. Mm -hmm. Jesus turns to Eden. Yeah, there's several of these moments. Uh, not only when she's feeding them, but also when, when Jairus comes in and Yusuf comes in. And then at the end of the episode as well, right? Where she's having these kind of reflective moments of like, like, mm -hmm. you know, what's like this? It's obviously turmoil, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Eden to compliment the food and mm -hmm. the, her expression. Like, I think even the simplest of men could look at that and go, <laughs> there is something wrong. <laughs> mm. But but this is Jesus we're talking about here. And the mm. expression on Jonathan's face is, is like, it feels like in that moment he knew. Yeah, mm. for sure. So the question I have is in season one, Jesus said, I see you. Yeah. Mm. So now here we are in this moment. And there's this part of me that wondered, why was there not a moment where Jesus got up and comforted her mm -hmm. to let her know, I see mm -hmm. you? Well, for one thing, it's Simon's job to comfort her. Yes. <laughs> um, and he's not doing a very good job of it. Not for lack of trying. Right. But without giving too much away, I would say that Jesus is actually, in, in allowing them to walk through this together, and on and not on their own, but like have to work it out between each other and between God, um, Part of that is a, the deepest way of seeing her because of where it ultimately takes her and her husband and what it means for his future as the rock. We also are really careful about what we sometimes call the God goggles. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's this fully God, fully man thing where you don't right. want everything to just be like, oh, he can read everyone's mind. Right. And I think he has yeah. said that before. He's like, I'm, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a dance. Yeah. Um, I think Jesus is we just don't know, right? Like we've been talking about this for over a year and a half, you know, of how Jesus was, was manifested as human and God, right? Mm -hmm. We don't know what that looked like. If he had all of these abilities all the time, right? Or, or like what happened at what times? Because we know that there were some things that he could not do because the Bible tells us that, mm -hmm. right? Like he does not know the day or the hour when he was going to return. Right. But if he is God, he would be omnipotent. He would be all knowing, right? Mm -hmm. So, he, he, again, leaves his power aside as something not to be desired, right? Or not mm -hmm. to be clung to, mm -hmm. right? Um, and so then he can fully rely on the Father for everything that he does. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, we just don't know how it, how it worked out. But we do know at some points he did read people's minds. We do know at some points he did heal people. Mm -hmm. We do know at some points he did understand way more than, than any human could have, right? right. Um, and so we just don't know what he was actually like. You know, it's yeah. really hard to tell through scripture, mm -hmm. at least fully, right? The exact words about reading Simon's mind were, that's a conversation for another time. Right. <laughs> and, this, and I'm waiting for that time. <laughs> You've decided this is that yes. time. Yes. <laughs> like, I'm waiting for that Wouldn't time. You know? Let's have that conversation. <laughs> I think ultimately when you see how this plays out, like him needing them to, to sort this out, you'll, you'll see how that was a profound act of love um, that deepens their faith. Mm. Wow. And then during this scene, while they're gathered around the table, Jesus is talking to them, Jairus and Yusuf, they yeah. come in mm. because Jairus has a need. His daughter is sick. And this is one of my most favorite scenes mm. because as soon as he sees Jesus, same, he's just like, uh, uh. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, yeah, I would be too. Yeah. But what I love about the scene is, you know, Jesus says, you've never met me. Mm. And yet you have this much faith. And yeah. then Jairus says, I know you. I know you. Mm. Could yeah. you tell us a little bit more about that? Absolutely. Um, you know, the the work that Jairus has done um, and the work that Jesus will do for Jairus, these things aren't earned. The fact that he read the You know, we're constantly again. writing around miracles. <laughs> and <laughs> because miracles are anti-dramatic. Chris, you you love yeah. you love sci-fi and fantasy. I How do. many times are we trying <laughs> to avoid the Griffin coming in at the last moment right. when they're pushed to the edge of the cliff you have and to they get earn fly away. the Griffin? You have to earn yeah. the <laughs> Griffin. It's got to be that emotional moment of oh, the Griffin is Good here. But, yeah. but the definition of a miracle is that it's given by grace mm. and that it isn't earned. Right, and it's not deserved. So we're constantly working around that as a parameter of writing. So we're trying to create drama. But we're using constantly these, these tentpole moments where God just hands us a thing. 
because he does and he can and we don't deserve it but but it's given to us so this is one of those moments right where yeah. Jairus's faith was won by Yusuf so the the, the people mm-hmm. that were present or populated Jairus's life led him to this place he was moved by the spirit and so he's in a place before he's even laid eyes on God that that he knows what Jesus can do and his faith is pure and so he's he's you know taken to a place where um, God's going to give him a miracle. And so we want the audience to feel that we, we want them to want it for Jairus mm-hmm. as much as Jairus wants it himself. Yes. And we've seen, and we've done that build through episodes one, two, uh, four, and five to, to show where Jairus has, has been moved uh, by the letter, by, mm-hmm. by Yusuf, by mm-hmm. the things he's seen. Um, and so, you know, he's, he's growing and we're watching it. So in that mm-hmm. moment... Um, that's where that's coming from. None of it's earned, but we want to make it feel, you know, like, <laughs> yeah. like you're yeah. there emotionally. Yeah. Yeah. I love the way that they portrayed Jairus. We talked about this a little bit last week, but the fact that he, he didn't come to Jesus just because Yusuf wrote down all those things, not just because of the fact of who Jesus was, but because he looked back in scripture, because mm-hmm. he really sought out the truth that he knew right from scripture, he knew that this is God's word. Mm -hmm. And so he used that as the corroborating evidence towards who Jesus was and who he was claiming to be. Mm -hmm. And so that was really, really um, a beautiful moment and a beautiful way to see Jairus in that light. Right. And the first thing that Jairus does when he's looking for healing, at least in the show, right. He's, he's looking for all these different things. He's looking for scrolls that have anything about healing. He's trying to find anything. Right. Mm -hmm. And then he remembers Jesus, Mm -hmm. you know, and then immediately everything is out the window. This Mm -hmm. is his only hope. It's his only faith. Mm -hmm. It's his only um, momentum. Right. And so that's what he goes towards. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's a great how he saw the through line, the through line of Jesus throughout the whole Bible. Right. Right. Like it just reminds me wrong about this, the dogma and the, yeah, exactly. Yeah. It just reminds me of how I came to faith. Right. Like it was through reading the Bible. I didn't go to church and stuff like it was reading the Bible and then everything pointed to Jesus right and you know right. like all the answers were there so yeah it's beautiful yeah yeah so good one of the things that I I, I just kind of find amazing in these scenes because you know we're, we're going into the scene with Veronica now you know mm. the whole she's healed when she grabs the hem of his garment so we're seeing another big miracle we have Jairus and we're heading to his house um, and then we have Eden kind of mm. left in the kitchen yeah. yeah and it's not like her faith is any less than Jairus mm. and it's not that I even have a question about this. It's just I sit here and I, in that balance that you have that I think makes it so relatable, mm. seeing these people get miracles, but then you have other people like, but I'm believing. Mm. I mean, it's just the way that you wrote that balance and kept that tension in there and relatable where it's like, yeah, no, I get that. But it's not like Jesus forgot about her either. It's, no. It's just like, it's just like Ryan just said. We don't earn any of this. Yeah. We don't deserve any of this. Yeah. Just because Jesus can heal doesn't mean that he will. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. Just because just because he can do these things doesn't mean that he will. And so we have to recognize that God will do what he wants and that's what he does. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. And um and we don't deserve anything. We can't earn anything. And that's why his grace is so magnificent mm-hmm. because he offers that freely to everybody. Right. You know? It's beautiful. No, stories have physics. You know, they have their own physics. Like if you uh, are blessed with tremendous talent, you pay a tremendous cost. Think of like Ray Charles, right? Like all the, all the vices that he had, the, his blindness, these things. Like that makes sense in Western storytelling. Those are the physics. Jesus has his own physics. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and yep. so a story about uh, these characters, one of the things is that God's time is different than ours. Yes. And so in this moment, you know, um, Dallas objects to this wording, but if it ain't okay, if it, if it ain't okay, it ain't the end, and it'll be all, all okay in the end, you know. So, so one of the things that we're we we you know our audience gives us as an act of faith the space to explore these stories, and so I can understand also if people are angry mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. in those moments on her behalf, on her behalf, sure. and and sometimes you know you've been, you 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 the trust feels misplaced if we if we play that you know, for, for too long on a storyline, you know, I mean, what we can try to tell you is that if it, you know, everything's going to be okay in the end, but, um, you know, uh, the, the, that's not the physics either of life. Right. So, <laughs> so we're walking through this as Eden is walking through it. And we all had those problems that aren't solved when we want them to be solved. Mm-hmm. We want something to be reversed. Take it away. 
do right. this, bring them back, do, you know, and it's not happening right now. So that feels relatable, although it's unsatisfying. We, yeah. we acknowledge that. Yeah. yeah. Well, it, it's for me, it is satisfying in a way because it's relatable, because mm-hmm. it's something yeah. that I've been through. It's something that I understand. And to see that even people who are close to Jesus have experienced the same types of things I've yeah. experienced. So yeah, maybe that's... Well, in a hypothetical sense, right? Even people that are close to Jesus have experienced the same things that I've experienced. It's a hypothetical sense. It's like in the show, right? Um, mm. But yes, people that were near Jesus probably went through similar things. We can probably say that for, uh, for certain. It's not a resolution, but there's strength to that. Yeah. Right. And there were 15 or so years where Veronica's problems weren't being solved. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. And yeah. speaking of Veronica, 12. when she got healed, Jesus says, you have blessed me today. Why didn't Veronica say that instead? Hmm. Mean, meaning like after it happened. Yes. Yeah, she when would, she got Because it, it's yes. like she received the blessing. Yeah. So she But it's just said so it. interesting. Jesus says, you have blessed me. Well, he was moved by her faith. Yeah. Um, and he's been, you know, starting to run into the first skids with, uh, <laughs> with Simon already. Uh-huh. Um, and it's, you know, it lifts his spirits to encounter someone who doesn't have an argument with him, who isn't questioning him, and who has so much faith that she feels like she doesn't even need to ask. She can just, in her mind, wow. touch the f- fringe of the garment. And that, I think, is it just, it touches him. And I think he also knows, not in some like God goggles way, but he knows there's some rough roads ahead. Um, we already know that things didn't go great uh, on Philip and Andrew's mission and, mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. and things like that. And, and we'll find out, I think, a little bit more about that in coming episodes. But yes, I mean, she blessed him with her display of faith, which was so extreme mm-hmm. and surprising. Mm-hmm. And he, she didn't even know him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Or he didn't yeah. even know her. Yeah. yeah. One of my favorite um, little moments during that healing was when, uh, so she's on the ground mm-hmm. and he goes, Jesus says, step forward. And Yusuf goes, teacher, like, it's her. And Jesus just goes, what is that? Because it's so simple, yet I feel like it's so much deeper than just this. What's up, Cornelius? Thank you for becoming a member. Welcome, welcome, welcome. That's wonderful. I mean, that, and that's our, that's our cast. Yeah. That, that oh, was that not on the script? Look, no. you know, the thing like that, you can't count on it translating. Right. And, and, and so that they have to make that work on the day. And that's really just the communication, unspoken in that case, between wow. Yusuf and Jonathan and Dallas and, and our camera crew to capture it. So that's really execution, yeah. Yeah, and I what? think because on the day, they may have thought about like, okay, so what if she does take a little step forward or whatever? And then the mechanics of the scene and the way it was working, she was still on the ground from the previous shot. Yeah. And then they know how to problem solve and kind of call an audible, think on the fly, do something, you know, special in that moment. So it's maybe not as like romantic of an answer. Like it's a little no, bit more process. The fact than, that it's not scripted, that's got to be like a God drop, like during that moment. So mm-hmm. yeah. yeah, it totally, wow. it, it totally makes some of the scenes. I mean, you know, I think of one uh, from season one uh, when Jonathan and, and uh, Shahar have that moment on the boat and they're, they're, they're sort of silently going, all right, I'll give it a try. Oh, and Jonathan yeah. gives them the, all right, mm-hmm. that's your word. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That though, that it's exchange the right there is not on the page. Yeah. It's just a wonderfully human moment that comes through in Jonathan's performance. Okay, mm-hmm. one more little moment that's not on this episode that I love was when Nicodemus started to kneel, mm-hmm. and Jesus goes, "What are you doing?" Was that on the script? <laughs> he does say in the script it says you don't have to do that. Yes, but I think yeah, they they played it up in a in a funnier. Way. I love it though. It's yeah, so, yeah. They kind of changed oh. the wording a little bit and. I yeah. love it. It's, it makes him more human. It makes Jesus more human. Like, what? It, okay. 
Yeah, some sure. people like don't <laughs> like that line because they're like, well, he does need to do that, you know, or whatever. Uh -huh. And we stand by it and by the way that they talked about it, like the what are you doing? Because it just, it, he he's like you said, he's human. Yeah. And um, Nicodemus was trying to make this, well, not trying, but he was making it a very, very big moment. And he was about to yes. be very, very vulnerable. And Jesus is so good at disarming people, you know, when yeah. they're at their most vulnerable. I love it because I feel like Nicodemus is showing like a sense of reverence, but then Jesus saying hey what are you doing or you don't have to do that <laughs> it's, it kind of reflects him like stooping down to yeah. our level and it's yes like, yes i love him even more yeah <laughs> oh, that's a great that's a great point too because it tell it, it, it we we were just we're always concerned about journeys and so mm -hmm. nicodemus is in that moment willing to to, to take a knee to, yeah. to the, yeah. you know so yeah. he's come a long way life right? can't you know, just to, to be about money play. it's never not about money with you yeah <laughs> <laughs> thanks sandy appreciate that sandy. so much sandy you rock uh, one of our amazing, amazing, legendary patrons. Um, she's really, really awesome. Been around for a long time now, Sandy. Thank you for sticking with us for sure. You and Timothy both. Yes. That off. And that's part of the writer's corners. We'll tell you the stuff we didn't do too. Yeah. Well, there is something oh, you did do. do that I kind of want to jump to and talk about. When Jairus's daughter, Neely, is being raised from the dead. Mm -hmm. I don't know why I found this wording really interesting. But normally you look at the Bible and he says, little girl, arise. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, they put whatever Greek word that he would say. So mm -hmm. like we're going to talk about this in our breakdown as well. But little lamb actually does make a little bit of sense as well. But we're going to I wonder if what they talk about it here. Mm -hmm. Literally, it's little girl arise. But you guys pick something that I feel like is very personal and kind of powerful. I'm just curious, like the change that you made in this one tiny line. It was little lamb arise. And so what was the purpose behind changing it to that? Well, Jesus has said before he has a soft spot for shepherds and sheep for more than one reason. I mean, shepherds Aww. were the first to announce uh, his birth. Right. And John, his cousin has referred to him as the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Um, and, you know, that might honestly be better, a better question for Dallas because I do think that that was his change. Oh, really? We may oh. have started out with little girl. There is a there is a reason for it. We're going to talk about it in a bit. So stick around for our breakdown for sure. They girl arise. Um, and it may have been upon further research that like it's a cognate, like it's a similar word. Uh, in, the, in the original Aramaic, like it, it kind of could be little lamb or whatever, but there is something yet so touching about that, uh, like little girl is like kind of broad and simple, but little lamb is like specific and endearing. Yeah. Um, and, and yeah, there, there was a tenderness to it that Jonathan played really well. Awesome yeah. too, because we talked about the way that uh, in, a, in a Mr. Carson way, mm. Jairus had been shep uh, shepherding Yusuf's shepherding. growth. Yes. And uh, you know, like an he's rewarded for, for that act of faith. And, yeah. yeah. Beautiful. Well, so, so it, it just added that much more of a personal touch to a scene yeah. that was already beyond emotional. So mm. this is, again, one of those times where I, I'm now thinking of 56 other questions I have for you. <laughs> <laughs> but you can tell Chris is pretty invested in this episode. It's obviously his favorite, like one of his favorites, you know. He says earlier that this is his favorite episode, so you can tell like he's more excited than some of the other episodes we've seen him do interviews on. Talking about uh, Chris, yeah, yeah, Chris Durbin, yeah. But it is time to go, and I hate that because we could talk for hours. Well, Ryan and Tyler, thank you thank so much you. for hanging out. Awesome. Well, that's the after show. Really, I love the perspective that Ryan and Tyler always bring. Yes, one of my absolute favorites. Yes, um, to be able to hear from them and to to hear you know, just their heart about why they wrote what they wrote. Hey guys, if you like this small excerpt from our live stream, you can check out the whole four hour live stream over on our Patreon. Just go to patreon.com slash the snipe life. This is seriously the best way to help to support our ministry and our YouTube channel. Thank you so much. And we'll see you over there.